In today's digital age, software applications are ubiquitous, underpinning everything from online banking and e-commerce to healthcare systems and critical infrastructure. This reliance on software makes secure coding practices paramount. Secure coding involves designing and developing software with security in mind, proactively mitigating potential vulnerabilities that malicious actors could exploit. Failing to prioritize secure coding can have dire consequences. Data breaches, financial losses, and reputational damage are just a few of the risks associated with insecure software. Organizations and individuals alike must prioritize secure coding practices to safeguard sensitive information and maintain trust in the digital world. The importance of secure coding cannot be overstated. By adopting a security-first mindset and implementing robust coding practices, developers can create software that is resilient to attacks and protects the interests of users and organizations. In this video we delves into the fundamental principles of secure coding, providing a comprehensive overview of the essential practices that contribute to the development of secure and reliable software applications. Input validation and sanitization are fundamental aspects of secure coding, serving as the first line of defense against a wide range of security vulnerabilities, including cross-site scripting and SQL injection attacks. Input validation involves rigorously checking all data received from external sources, ensuring it conforms to predefined expectations. This includes verifying data types, formats and ranges, preventing malicious or malformed data from disrupting the application's functionality. Sanitization complements validation by modifying data to remove potentially harmful characters or code. This process neutralizes any malicious elements that might have bypassed validation checks, rendering them harmless. For instance, a web application that fails to validate and sanitize user input could be vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. An attacker could inject malicious JavaScript code into input fields which would then be executed in the browsers of other users, potentially compromising their accounts or stealing sensitive information. By implementing robust input validation and sanitization techniques, developers can effectively mitigate the risk of such attacks, ensuring that only trusted and sanitized data is processed by the application. Authentication and authorization are crucial aspects of secure coding ensuring that only authorized users can access sensitive data and functionality. Authentication verifies the identity of users, while authorization determines the level of access granted to authenticated users. Strong authentication mechanisms, such as multi-factor authentication, are essential to prevent unauthorized access. Multi-factor authentication requires users to provide multiple forms of identification, such as a password and a one-time code sent to their mobile device, making it significantly more difficult for attackers to compromise user accounts. Authorization, on the other hand, enforces access control policies ensuring that users can only access the resources and perform the actions they are permitted to. This involves verifying permissions and roles before granting access to specific data or functionalities. Implementing robust authentication and authorization mechanisms is paramount for protecting sensitive information and maintaining the integrity of software applications. By verifying user identities and enforcing access control policies, developers can effectively mitigate the risk of unauthorized access and data breaches. Secure data storage and transmission, protecting data at rest and in transit. Protecting sensitive data is paramount in secure coding, encompassing both data at rest, which is stored on databases or file systems, and data in transit, which is transmitted over networks. Encryption is the cornerstone of secure data storage and transmission, rendering data unintelligible to unauthorized entities. Encrypting data at rest involves using strong encryption algorithms to transform sensitive data into an unreadable format, protecting it from unauthorized access even if the storage medium is compromised. This is crucial for safeguarding confidential information such as passwords, financial data, and personally identifiable information, or PII. Similarly, encrypting data in transit safeguards data as it travels across networks, preventing eavesdropping and man-in-the-middle attacks. Secure communication protocols such as TLS and SSL encrypt data exchange between clients and servers, ensuring that sensitive information remains confidential during transmission. By employing robust encryption techniques for both data at rest and in transit, developers can significantly enhance the security posture of their applications, mitigating the risk of data breaches and unauthorized access to sensitive information. 
Principle of Least Privilege, Minimizing the Attack Surface The principle of least privilege is a fundamental security principle that advocates for granting users and processes only the minimum level of access necessary to perform their tasks. Adhering to this principle significantly reduces the potential attack surface and mitigates the impact of security breaches. When users or processes have more privileges than required, they pose a greater security risk. If their accounts are compromised, attackers gain access to a wider range of resources and functionalities, potentially causing more extensive damage. By adhering to the principle of least privilege, developers can limit the potential damage from security breaches. If an attacker gains control of an account with limited privileges, the impact is minimized as they can only access a restricted set of resources. For instance, a web application should not grant administrative privileges to regular users. Similarly, a database user should only have the necessary permissions to read or modify specific tables, rather than having full database access. Implementing the principle of least privilege requires careful consideration of user roles, permissions, and access control mechanisms. By adopting a least privilege approach, developers can enhance the overall security posture of their applications, minimizing the potential impact of security incidents. If you learned something new, like the video and share your thoughts in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more related videos.